Hi everyone, I'm Emmanuel from Ateneo de Manila in the Philippines. Insect decline has been happening on a global scale. Yet, the extent to which this happens in tropical aquatic setting is often underestimated due to lacking baselines. That's why in this study, I'll be presenting my PhD dissertation on the contributions to the tremendous diversity of black hairy beetles belonging to family Limnicidae. The family in question here is the group of minute marsh-loving beetles. They do not live in water, but in wood suspended in rivers and streams. They are very small at 0.55 millimeters, as you can see or not see here. The fact that they are just small and hairy does not help, given the heavy focus to charismatic fauna. Thus, today, I wish to build a case on the tremendous diversity of limnicid family. They belong to superfamily Biroidea, whose standing is found contentious using molecular and morphological evidences. Previously, limnicid beetles belong to the now defunct superfamily Dryopoidea. Also, limnicidae has four subfamilies. Thus, the first part of this talk concerns itself with the higher taxonomic position of the family, while the second part aims to focus on the lower taxonomy, especially species and genetic diversity of the genera Birinus cacotreptus, among others. First part, second part. For the first part, I aim to resolve the phylogenetic position of the family. For the longest time, Limnicide is often retrieved to be paraphyletic using morphological and molecular evidences. As you can see here, in attempts to resolve the beetle phylogeny, Limnicide is often clustered with families like Heteroceridae and Kelonaridae. Thus, to resolve limnicid phylogeny, I used both preserved collections and newly collected specimens from the field. There's a, there's a total of 800 specimens, but for clarity, what you will see later is the pruned data set of 83 taxa. I used also samples from 11 closely related families belonging to family Biroidea, or superfamily Biroidea rather. After the extraction, seven genes were amplified. For the analysis, I generated ML3 using three approaches and Bayesian tree using the BEAST package. Time calibration was done using Zhang et al. as basis. This shows the phylogenetic position of Limnikide in green within Biroidea. Here you can see that Limnikide was retrieved even with the monophyletic, uh, retrieved to be monophyletic, even with the presence of Kilonaride, which is in red, and Heteroceridae in yellow. Given that family Biroidea, usually the most variable in many analyses, is the most basal taxon right here, we're able to retrieve Dryopoidea as a reciprocally monophyletic group with a posterior probability value of 1.00, and each group is well supported. The time calibration tree, or the time calibrated tree, shows the Jurassic origin of Biroidea, though diversification happened during Cretaceous period. As for the family in question, the origin of Limnicidae was pushed back from 91 million years ago to 139.5 million years ago in early Cretaceous. Previous Coleopteran time calibration does not use uh, that many of uh, Limnicidae specimens. Not only were able to retrieve the monophyly of the family, the four subfamilies erected using morphological approaches are all retrieved to be monophyletic with good support value. The first split is between Limnikidne and the three subfamilies. This disregards, or disagrees rather, the finding, the earlier finding, that the basal possession is occupied by Hyphaline. As for as the biggest subfamily with 27 genera, Limnikidne is divided into three types, differentiated on the basis of pronotum. These are all retrieved in the tree, but in addition, I propose, we are proposing to erect three new tribes for Limnikine for a total of six tribes. As we aim for integrative taxonomy, we developed a key to Limnikine tribes using a greater set of characters, including maxillary pulp, protibia, and the male genitalia. The second part of this presentation zooms into updating species inventory of subfamily Limnikine. 
prior to this study, there are 20 species present in the Philippines. As you can see in the map right here, sampling was done in localities denoted by white circles to augment the current known, currently known localities denoted in black. Sampling was done in river systems, mostly via light trap and manual collection. Traditional approaches in insect identification relies on morphological characterization, and thus habitus and genitalia were documented using microscopy. For the molecular analysis, alignment was processed and three analyses were performed. In addition to tree construction, molecular species delimitation was done using two threshold and four coalescence-based methods. Genetic distance was calculated too, and haplotype network was constructed using PCS. Let us look at the outcomes. The bars in shades of green show the outcomes of the different threshold-based and coalescent-based approaches. The results of these analyses were summarized in dark green, the MOTUS, the Molecular Operational Taxonomic Units. The MOTUS are compared to morphotypes. Lastly, Bars in shades of uh, brown, which as you can see here, are the Integrative Operational Taxonomic Units, or IOTUS. It summarizes the outcomes of the molecular species delimitation and morphological analysis. Here, you can see that there are three new species, numbered as one to three. There are also other sequences, which upon serving morphology shows great divergence. Uh, it could be investigated later on, given more samples. And here, you can see that integrating morphological and molecular data reveals more species, as you can see here. As product of the massive sampling efforts, I am claiming to, ident to have identified 12 new Berino species, which I shall be calling confirmed candidate species, following the publication of the 10 others. Two have been released in Zoo Keys just last week. There are eight MOTUS2, which can be studied with greater sample. This figure shows the genetic divergence versus frequency graph between Berino species. Orange represents intraspecific uh, distance from the Berino's data set, and the maximum value is 2.7, which is lower than the 3% threshold. As for interspecific distance plotted in blue, it can be seen that the mean plays from 14 to 16%. A clear barcoding gap therefore exists in Berino sequences. Let us look into this particular case study. You can see that um, you can see a haplotype network showing two different species, Berinus negrosensis and Berinus biliarini. They're present in one island, the island of Negros, and found in two river systems. Yet, the, uh, the mean intraspecific distance is actually very low. From one locality having several species, let us look at one species present in multiple localities. Here, you can see, uh, you can see that we have Berinus sp1 or confirmed candidate species 1. Localities are identified using a palette of closely related colors. So you can see here that the northern Philippines, northern portion of the Philippines is identified by blue and green central by red and purple, then the southern portion with pink, yellow, orange. And confirmed candidate species 1 is present all throughout the country with no clear genetic structure. Yet, the genetic distance with, among the, species, the, the sequences here is less than 1%. Confirmed candidate species 3 is concentrated on the northern Philippines, while confirmed candidate species 2 is concentrated on the southern portion of the Philippines. There are genital differences also among the species. Meanwhile, genus Berinus was time calibrated using global data set. Early divergence within oriental representatives date back to Oligocene at 33 million years ago, though divergence of the different clades happened in the late Miocene at 17 million years ago. This is how the Philippine Islands look like 17 million years ago, given that many islands are still submerged underwater and are not in their current position. It could be surmised that many Philippine Berinos lineages developed from other islands and just migrated here in the country. Looking at other uh, genera, for Oriental group uh, New Tribe 1, for Cacotriptos, there are three 
CCS, confirmed candidate species, two of which are collected from the same river. We increase the number of cacotriptus from four to six. For Pelocaris, we found four CCS and increasing the number of Pelocaris in the country in the Philippines from two to six. For Limnicus, there are two Iotus and one CCS. And there is one new CCS for Pseudocinetus, for, for, uh, belong to subfamily Tomastodinae. By using Limnikidae as a case study, this dissertation identified three new routes or three routes on how integrative taxonomy can fast track inventory of megadiverse aquatic beetles in the tropics. First, alpha taxonomy. Second, evaluating the congruence between motus and morphotypes. And third, sequencing uh, rep representative specimens for a morphologically described morphotype in order to ascertain genetic distance. Thus, in this dissertation, uh, we increase the number of limnicid species from 20 to 41, including first island records from the central Philippines. In summary, integrative taxonomic approach reveals a tremendous diversity of family limnicidae. In particular, I explore this diversity in different levels of organization, providing notes on superfamily, establishing the monophyly of the family, four constituent subfamilies, and I propose three new tribe systems increasing species diversity from 20 to 41 with 12 iotus. Here are some of my sources. I'd like to extend my appreciation for the members of the Biodiversity Laboratory, institutions which granted sampling permits and funding for the project, as well as collaborators from different institutions. Lastly, the study is dedicated to one of my co-authors for the first half of study, Dr. Ignacio Rivera, who left us last year. He will be remembered for as a devoted mentor and for his good-hearted nature. Thank you for listening.